So I was wondering if and, you could tell us uh, so a bit more about the inspiration behind and, this, uh, uh, this piece. These two terms are probably those more fully describing sunrise, figure, and music. I've decided to present on Sanra for this conference since its philosophy and music are based on the same concepts defining sci-fi in arts and literature, time travel, parallel universes, extraterrestrial life, and advanced futuristic technology. In its art and performances, it mixed all of that with motives and symbols taken from ancient traditions and in particular from the ancient Egyptian solar religion. On paper, he was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama on May 22, 1914, a Gemini with the name of Herman Paul Blount. And the name Herman was inspired by Black Herman, the most prominent African-American magician of the time who claimed to descend from Moses and be able to raise the dead. He was also a political activist associated to Black nationalists, such as Marcus Garvey, with the mission to promote Black power uh, using occult magic. Alabama remained a place of racist, um, racist struggles until the 60s. The photographer Colin Jones has been documenting it uh, through Black and white photos. Here you see a couple of them. Uh, while in 1963, Martin Luther King had written from the city's jailhouse, Birmingham is probably the most thoroughly segregated city in the United States. Its ugly record of brutality is widely known. So this was the terrestrial setting when Sandra was born, raised, and also Birmingham is where he returned to live with his sister during the last years of his life and where he died in 1993. He was buried in, the, in Birmingham in the Elmwood Cemetery. Around the, the first years of the 50s, Herman Blount decided to rewrite his biography, erasing basically all the dates and events from his past. When interviewed, as you can read in uh, John Sved's excellent biography, Space is the Place, he will claim sometimes not to have a mother, or he will say that he comes from Saturn. Me and time never got along so good. We just sort or ignore each other. I came from somewhere else. I'm not a human. I never called anybody mother. I separated myself from everything that in general you call life. I've abandoned the habitual and my previous life is of no significance anymore for me. This is still from the same book. It's by erasing his terrestrial life and finding his true self in a myth dimension that he will call the astro-black mythology um, that the musician, philosopher, mystic Sun Ra becomes an Afrofuturist and Egyptophil at the same time. Astro-black mythology, a term also used by Graham Locke in uh, the book Bluetopia, refers to both a mythic past and a mythic future for African Americans, incarnating the duality of the astro, outer space future, and black ancient Egyptian uh, past. Although at first sight, the astro-black mythology can appear as pure sci-fi, it's based on a real cultural context, that one of the avant-garde musicians in the Black America of the 50s. The lyrics of astro-black uh, are really great, uh, and I, um, I hope to, we can uh, listen. <laughs> I think I, I went too fast with them. Okay, I'll try again just to. Astro timeless immortality. Astro thought in mystic sound. Astro black. Oh, how to say, I throw 
of the lyrics, beautiful lyrics, uh, out to endless, endlessness uh, continues in the song. And principles such as mythology, mortality, the endlessness of the sky and the stars are powerful references to celestial religions and African cosmologies. For millennia, the sun, moon, and stars have been looked at as deities in ancient and modern polytheistic religions. They've been the source of inspiration for understanding and counting time, for divination and for myths of creation. From the Yoruba people of Nigeria's divination instruments to contemporary art, the cosmos has inspired thousands of African artists. Particularly appealing among the various African religious beliefs is the cosmology of the Yoruba people from Nigeria, which is very popular also in Afrocentrist, Afrofuturist circles. Also today can be found represented on many objects like wooden bowls, other lidded vessels like this one in the photo, uh, whose top symbolized the heaven and the spirit world, and the bottom stands in for the physical world of earth deities and humans. The divine figure of Shango is also very important, the Orisha of thunder and lightning, a spirit in between man and the divine. Uh, many ritual tools uh, like this one are used uh, also today to evoke him. Sky and earth are closely connected in ancient and modern African religions in order for the cycle of life and death to continue endlessly. It is especially ancient Egypt that stimulates African-American musicians and artists like Sanra because of the solar mythology and arts. Solar symbols in the art of ancient Egypt are numerous, from scarabs in the form of dung, beetles, pushing the sun disk across the sky, like here, to the baboons associated with the sun because they call out, call out or bark at the sun at sunrise, aiding Ra on his journey, like on uh, this relief panel showing two baboons offering the Wejatai to the sun god Rukepri, who holds uh, hold the underworld uh, duat sign. Also the Amarna art where the sun becomes the disc, the Aton, which Sunra uses in many vinyl covers, as well as a costume accessory for his performances. And see how in this photo uh, of him, uh, this photo recalls, for instance, a fragment of a relief depicting the royal cartouche of Akhenaton. And Sanra was an avid reader of books on ancient Egyptian religion and spirituality, starting from when he moved to Southside in Chicago in the early 50s, one of the few places where black people could live more at ease, although always segregated. That's where he also started his career as an avant-garde jazz musician, had his first mystic visions, like when he wrote in his diary that he had a dream um, in which he was summoned by robbed figures who had transported him through a narrow beam of light until they all reached their destination, the planet Jupiter. The idea of space and cosmos uh, and of aliens taking him there and then back to the Earth become prominent in his art and music, also influenced by his friendship with a very peculiar local mystic man and intellectual, Alton Abraham. According to John Sweat's seminal biography, already mentioned, Space is the Place, Abraham was philosophical by nature, serious and scholarly, with a deep interest in science, metaphysics, and Bible scholarship. He clicked with Sarah, who at the time was still going by the name Sonny, and the two quickly became inseparable. Together, they visited bookstore in Chicago, Woodlawn, and Hyde Park, looking for new means to advance their own esoteric learning. They studied numerology, Egyptology, astrology, astronomy. They started seminizing in Washington Park. Abraham was also a musician himself, and soon he became Sanra's manager and promoter. Together, they founded El Saturn Records, an independently owned record label dedicated to recording and distributing Sanra's music. Yet Abraham and Sanra's partnership continued to build a movement that went beyond just music. Together, 
they continue to develop a pan-religious uh, ideology. And as Zved tells it, they talk to whoever will listen, argued over matters of ultimate concern with other groups who met there, communist, uh, fundamentalist religious groups of every type. Um, and as quoted also in the same book, Abraham recalls that, um, recalled that those who critique the quasi-messianic duo said, next you, you'll be saying your gods. We, and we replied, we were gods in the making. Abraham also put together a massive collection of Sunra's records, records, manuscripts that are today part of an archive, the Alton Abraham Collection, a subset of the Chicago Jazz Archive, which is a main source of information for understanding Sunra's philosophy. And the album We Travel the Spaceways was recorded by Sunra and its Mid Science Orchestra, mostly between 1951 and 1960 in Chicago, although then released in 1967 on Sunrise on label Saturn. And they used also a toy robot for um, the mechanical sounds at the end of the title track, where uh, it is said, um, we travel the spaceways from planet to planet. Uh, Again, just listen to the very beginning to have an idea of the, of the music, um, though I will keep it short since we don't have uh, much time. Let's see if this works. Um, as well but um, let's continue by saying that um, it's in uh, Chicago that um, uh, with Alton Sarra creates the Tmei research a secret society and publishing house for black counter knowledge incommensurable with conventional academic learning as they say the aim of this society was to create a new mythology for uh, disenfranchised uh, uh, black Americans the Judeo-Christian thoughts uh, and history were now considered too modern and too white. Tmei was looking for uh, something more ancient and so source material coming from Egypt, uh, the world's first civilization in a mix with other ancient traditions uh, were used to create an alternative tradition of greater force and promise gleaned from the combined mystical traditions of Egyptology, Theosophy, Numerology, and others among the occult, as uh, Paul Jonquist writes in his book, A Pure Solar World, The Sunrise, The Birth of uh, Afrofuturism. To me, it could provide an intellectual frame for an altern alternate reality that stands on hope and beauty and rejects segregation and oppression. They will forge political resistance, Jonquist writes, from a slag heap of beliefs deemed irrational, obsolete, or just plain crackpot by Western religion, philosophy, and science. But where the name Tmei comes from, it was actually taken from early Egyptological books, such as Wilkinson's Manners and Custom of the Ancient Egyptians, where many names of Egyptian deities were read and transcribed in Coptic, such as Maat, the goddess of justice and truth, mentioned as Tmei and associated to the Greek goddess Themis. So the ancient character of Tmei fits the aim of San Raz and Alton society, promoting justice in the segregated area of South Side Chicago and the US in general. This is an important phase of San Raz's life when he decided to respond to the unjust and brutally segregated world of mid 20th century America, not through violent or political fight, but through culture, music, poetry, arts, in order to imagine an alternative uh, present and future to an oppressive reality. 
Sandra was a visionary and I can imagine him and Alton looking at plates like this one with images of Egyptian deities in the Hall of Truth taken from temple reliefs, finding the needed inspiration for tireless improved life on planet Earth, challenging listeners everywhere to heed the simple call to joy, as he claimed. It is not clear, also not from the available biographical studies on Sanra, if the Black Islamic movements, such as the Nation of Islam, accepted the pantheistic utopia, utopian vision of Sanra's Neo-Egypt, or what the Black Church also talked about a religion that rejected Jesus Christ. These are questions indeed that I'd like to explore and answer later on in order also to better understand the history of reception of ancient Egypt in Black America topic I'm working on since recently. Today instead I will conclude my presentation by mentioning the important role that Sanra had as a, as a pioneer of a fascinating current of thought already mentioned called Afrofuturism and the role that ancient Egypt played in it. I will let my colleague Daniel Soliman to talk more extensively about Afrofuturistic music, while I will just mention here that the pioneer's work of San Ra on Afrofuturism was meant to help Black Americans of the 50s to see their situation clearly, imagine a fairer world and get there through material, graceful aspirations. In other words, San Ra wanted to free their imagination. In one among his many beautiful poems, Imagination indeed res recited in 1968 in the recording Somewhere There, he wrote, imagination is a magic carpet upon which we may soar to distant lands and climes and even go beyond the moon to any planet in the sky. If we came from nowhere here, why can't we go somewhere there? Coined by cultural critic Mark Dera in an essay called uh, Black to the Future, Afrofuturism draws together elements of astral jet, African-American sci-fi, psychedelic hip hop into an all encompass encompassing philosophy, imagining alternative uh, visions of tomorrow. Itasha Womack, a prominent exponent of Afrofuturism, defines the movement as an, in an intersection between Black culture, technology, liberation, and imagination with some mysticism, mysticism thrown in too. It can be expressed through film, it can be expressed through art, literature, literature and music. It's a way of bridging the future and the past and, uh, and the past and essentially helping to reimagine the experience of people of color. And I've been quoting here also Womack. Sanra's attraction to Egypt was intimately uh, related to the idea formed after reading many Afrocentric books, such as The Stolen Legacy, uh, 1954, by George James, uh, arguing that Greek philosophy and religion originated in ancient Egypt. He learned that the ancient world, and Egypt in particular, was less a place than a myth. White people made claims on it for themselves through scholarship since, as Red wrote, the Negroes had long been a threatening force. They raised the cipher that needed to be explained away in order to sustain white people's claims to the ancient world. It was a competing mythology which white people had to once suppress and demonize. It was another history of the world, the history of the universe, really, that needed to be discovered and one which the right person might discover, a person whose heart was pure and whose sincerity was unquestioned. And that was him, San Ra, and similar to the sun god from ancient Egypt, he had the following, namely the band known as the orchestra or solar myth orchestra, Astro Infinity Orchestra, Intergalactic Solar Orchestra, Cosmo Love Orchestra, there were numerous names uh, given to his band. It features the uh, saxoso saxophonist Marshall Allen, John Gilmore, Pat Patrick, uh, among others, with uh, whom Ra San Ra moved to New York in the 70s and became become, uh, known for wearing elaborate costumes inspired to ancient Egypt, but with futuristic elements too. They tra traveled and played uh, in Egypt, and uh, you can find uh, recordings uh, of those travel and concerts. We have 
so I'm concluding anyway. They play with him and still play today a visionary music. They are their legacy, keeping exploring the universe with electronic keyboards and horns, aligning the history of ancient Egypt with the vision of a future human exodus beyond the stars, as recently written in a beautiful article issued by the New Yorker, uh, New Yorker June 28, 2021. And continuing, they continue the, the teaching of Sun Rao has been lecturing even at UC Berkeley in the 70s, using his, in his course, among other texts, also the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead. And together with Daniel Soliman, who will talk after me, we were lucky enough to organize uh, an interview with Marshall Allen and uh, Noel Ra of the orchestra, which will be part uh, of an exhibition in Leiden on music from the As African diaspora, yeah, Daniel will tell you all about it. And I was particularly impressed by the way they answered uh, our question on uh, how you felt when you visited Egypt the first time. And Noel Ra, here in the, in the photo on the right, uh, answered, it was like going back home and finding out that someone else is living there. Thank you.